Hello, everyone. It's Phil Jones, and joining me is Mateus Johansson from Dirac. And today we're going to be talking about an exciting new addition to Denon and Morant's AVRs, which is Dirac Base Control. Denon and Morant's were always looking at ways to improve the performance of our AVRs in your specific rooms. And one way is by partnering with Dirac to add Dirac Live room compensation software. But today we're going to take that to the next level. So, Mateus, how are you? Hi Phil, I'm I'm really good and looking forward to this discussion. It's always a pleasure to be here and talk with you about new exciting launches. Mateus, can you talk a little bit about um, Dirac and Dirac Live Room Compensation? Sure. I mean, the company Dirac, we're all about digital signal processing to improve the sound of any kind of sound system, really. We measure a sound system and then we optimize it through digital signal processing. So all we do is software-based improvements to your sound system. And we're in a lot of different areas actually, but home audio obviously being uh, one of our strategic key areas. The other one being automotive audio where we're really big and it's been around for many, many years in a lot of premium audio systems. Uh, but we're also in even in mobile phones, PCs, and, and headphones. So when it comes to Direct Live, that's our room correction product, which is known for its impulse response correction. And, uh, you know, impulse response correction is something that not everybody is familiar with, but it's about the time domain. So timing is everything in music, as most musicians will say, and we think that's true for audio systems as well. So the impulse response is measuring what happens when you send out an impulse to the system, like a drum beat. And what happens is it gets smeared out. So with impulse response correction, we're trying to make that as distinct and tight as possible. And that brings out another level of realism into the audio, and it brings out much better imaging and so on. So in addition to that, we of course do the frequency response correction. So we take a number of measurements around your listening area, and then we correct both impulse responses and frequency responses. That's what direct live room correction does. Yeah, so we had covered this in detail in a previous video that we did back in Japan when we first added um, Dirac to our Denon and Marantz AVRs. But the goal is to continue to improve its um, the performance of, like I said, our receivers, because you can have the best receiver, you can set up your speakers in your room perfectly, you can even treat your room room treatments, but you're still going to have to apply some room compensation if you really want to fully optimize your experience. You do have to pay for this additional upgrade on top of um, Dirac Live. How big of an impact does this make on audio performance? You know, I think it's one of, it's a really big impact, actually. It's one of those difficult areas that people don't quite, I think, always appreciate. If you have a subwoofer, and especially if you have more than one subwoofer, which is a great idea to have, it's very difficult to get them to sound right. And in most cases, they interfere a lot with each other because you might position them in various places in the room and they interact with the room and all of a sudden you have a lot of dips throughout your frequency spectrum. And your bass is nowhere near what you thought it would be because you bought these additional subwoofers. So what what the base control does is to optimize these together. It uses all pass filters to make sure that these subwoofers together play optimally together to create that even base response throughout the listening area. It's not just reaching the target curve on average, it minimizes the variation so that you know people sitting in different places in the room get the same base impression and that you really get that full base extension that you thought you'd get with with subwoofers. And, and that's a major difference. Your bass is gonna be much better than if you're just doing regular room correction in almost every room. So that's at least what we're hearing from users today. And what I'm experiencing myself, I was doing yesterday actually a three subwoofer setup in our rooms here. And I got, you know, really surprised in a negative way when I just looked at the measured response after just having done a regular room correction three subwoofers looking at the frequency response in the base you know it added up destructively you had so much interference so actually i lost space i had less space with the three subwoofers than with one and 
you know, that's not really the intention of having three subwoofers. Mm -hmm. And when I've turned that bass control on, all of a sudden I had that smooth bass, the variations got down and bass extension further than I had. So it's a way to make sure that you're actually getting everything out of your system. And the bass region, I mean, it's extremely important for the overall experience. So, so bass control in my mind is one of the major advances we've seen in room correction for the last 10 years, in fact, because it really makes one of the most difficult tasks automatic for you. Mm -hmm. To get now you well integrated into the room. Yeah, because you mentioned that um that uh it's automatic and it's one of the more difficult things to do. A lot of people who are buying room compensation software limits its frequency response to just dealing with the the base regions because that's where they have the most challenges. And that whole thing about the subwoofers, we actually experienced that here. But we actually have a room with four subs, and when you measured each sub independent at the listing position, it was very good. And then we started. Then when we added um, all of them together, there was a there was a troublesome dip right around probably around 70, 60, 70 hertz, and we could not figure out what was going on. So we started basically unplugging subs one at a time until we found the one that was causing a problem. This one where it was positioned was interacting um, negatively. I mean, they did a pretty good job of canceling out both most of their nulls and peaks, to, um, to, but but there was this one spot. Were they with that those four subs in those positions were having an issue yeah exactly i mean that's quite common i would say actually and and sometimes if you're unlucky you don't even realize it right but but and especially if you're a custom installer and doing this and the client feels like ah oh, that wasn't much of an additional base response i got well that's because obviously it wasn't right and and it's not enough just to align them in time and amplitude which you might say you know you might think that okay i i make sure because i do that with the room correction make sure that the timing is correct but it's about how they interact in the room so we use all pass filters in the base region to make sure that they sum up coherently in the listening position and also evening out the variations across the different listening positions which is a, another major thing with having more than one subwoofer and i are looking at the crossover region again you know how is then the subwoofers interacting with the main speakers in the crossover region there's also a risk that you're getting either a peak or a dip depending on the distances between them mm -hmm. uh, and the face of the speakers and the room etc so we're also using all pass filters to optimize the whole crossover region mm -hmm. and in addition to that the third thing between the left speaker and the right speaker in the base region because if you look at like uh, a movie or whatever the mono material mm -hmm. and the base region of the mono material needs to sum up in phase at your listening position if it doesn't you know you're going to get a hollow sound somehow it's not going to sound good you're losing energy so we're dealing with that interaction as well in the crossover region mm -hmm. so there's a lot of things going on there in that crossover region subwoofers is such a great thing to have in your system because it really extends the, the base performance of your speakers if you get it right and that's where bass control comes in to make sure that you actually get it right and that you can see the results and visualize them through the measurement so so i think this is uh, this is an exciting development and you know i look forward to hearing all the feedback from from hopefully very happy Dan and Morant's customers down the line that to start using this. Because there's two parts, like you said, to, to bass before we leave. And that is the fact that it has to be deep and it has to be tight. We've done demonstrations where the bass went super low, but it was muddy. And we've yeah. done yeah. systems where the bass on a kick drum will take your breath away, um, gunshots, just snappy, powerful bass, but it wasn't very deep. So, so um, the goal is to give you the extension you need, but at the same time, maintain that tightness. And that tightness does have to do with making sure everything is perfectly aligned um, in time. So, so that, that's what you guys are good at. Yeah, that's what we're trying. So, Mateus, I am incredibly excited about this new addition to Denon and Marantz AVRs, and I look forward to a continued partnership with Dirac. Thank you, Phil. So do we very much. Looking forward to this exciting launch. Okay. So take care, everyone, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.